film noir, marbleized in the white glow of the phosphorescent box, transfixed by its drone, we too conspired to have thin men with turned up collars and black hats pulled down over one eye, running through the darkness of our dreams, while the shadow-hidden slumber figure of our mother was couched, snoring slightly, knees to her chest, in the darkness of our living room. Normandy, 1994. We are sipping wine, salad niçoise before us, as we sit at a long table at the prey door. Red and gold damask velvet papers the walls. Dad is standing, speaking about how he jumped in the night before D-Day fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat to take Carrington from the Nazis. <clears throat> we have taken a bittersweet journey here. He is losing his battle with cancer. He has arranged this gift for us and our families. We are here to bear witness. Actually, I didn't think to say, please hold your applause or I won't be able to finish all the poems. <laughs> Thank you. In another universe, the shaman is treating me for a broken heart. Treachery, ancient Tibetan bowls sing, as if in a peyote dream I descend till my eyes sear the chilling desolate plain, unending. Draped in Chinese red velvet, embraced by a silver fox collar, I am surrounded by the pack of black wolves. In stillness, my guardians howl silently at the full amber moon suspended in darkness. Holding my scepter, I stare ahead Resolute, snow falls. The pale blue vase. Can I reach it? Is the shelf too high? Time is stretched. It's all in slow motion. The pale blue vase, smooth porcelain, glazed. You are forcing yourself on me. I am locked in your steel grip, trying to claw my way out. The pale blue vase. I must reach for it. I must break it over your head and watch it burst. I am pushing with all the breath left in me, breaking your hold. It is happening so fast. I see the pale blue vase, and I escape your grip. You give up offered to walk me back to my dorm. The pale blue vase. I don't know if I could have reached it. My father's garden. Surrounded by trees laden with overgrown vines of purple concord grapes, my father labored standing and surveying the yard, rake in hand, proud of his land. Flowering quince, yellow forsythia, growing wildly at the borders, <coughs> thick with blueberry bushes, strawberry patch, plum tomatoes morphing from green to rich red, the occasional flash of a cardinal, the boy from Middle Village who'd daily climbed the narrow spiral staircase to the apartment above his parents' grocery, here reveled with abandon. 
the abundance of colors, fragrances, and songs of birds. I sat on the ground, dirt beneath my fingernails, small shovel in hand, feeling the hot sun, annoyed by the buzzing of insects, resenting forced labor. Only now do I remember his paradise, and it is mine. After the summer, sheer cream-colored drapes billowing in the breeze, tall, stately windows, the sky outside a glorious shade of blue, European crystal chandeliers and elegant furnishings. We are sipping coffee from china cups set on a crisp white tablecloth. When everyone goes home after the summer, where will I go, you ask me? You must think that you are at a grand hotel, but that your good fortune is fragile. Dementia is having her way with you. She has ripped out pages of your memory, and they are fluttering in the wind. Two years of living here at this senior residence have disappeared like skywriting. Once again, you are the shy little Jewish girl from the Bronx who sat under the wooden kitchen table, secretly devouring a tomato with salt, away from the eyes of her mother and grandmother, you are the spitting image of my sister Harriet, you say, peering at me. I am grateful that you still do know that I am your daughter. Your friends here, and even those you complained about, are now simply fellow guests who will be leaving, like you, after the summer. So beautiful. letter to my father. When you lay wounded in the snow in Bastogne, alone among the fir trees, so cold and wet and numb, wondering if someone would come or if you would die, tell me how you held on. You told me only about General McAuliffe, how when surrounded and asked to surrender, he said, nuts. You savored his brazen word of defiance. Mom has lost the plaque honoring that battle, along with your bronze star medal and purple heart. She is confused and asks where she lives and when she is going home. Dana leaves for college in the fall. Alan has turned 71, and you are gone 17 years. I search inside myself for that force in you, knowing your blood runs through me. At 46, Debbie Sri, the flying Balinese goddess of fertility, with her gold crown, deep green carved wings unfurled and reaching upwards, pale white arms wrapped round orange and red baby bunting. She is suspended serenely like a star in the sky of my bedroom as I hang in the space between forsakenness and motherhood. I worship her, but do not offer her jasmine, lotus, and incense, though perhaps I should. 
I treasure the fortune from my fortune cookie. Your fondest dream will come true. I savor my mother's dream of me, wearing a red dress, walking, holding the hand of a little girl. And then Dana arrives, bursting through the gates of impossibility, whooshing through the halls of the unexpected, from the heavens into my arms. This is the last one, no, Philip. Not. I'm doing okay? Yeah, you're Should I read two? We got three minutes. <laughs> you're, making, you're making me cry. Here. Okay. <laughs> I'll read a happy one for you, Philip. Miss <laughs> Taylor? Right here. Honeymoon, 1991. At sunset in Bellagio, we sit at the table by the window, looking out at mountains studded by shimmering lights. We eat our four-course Italian meal, smiling at one another, drink red wine, me spelt in my turquoise and black dress with the yellow sash, you handsome with your dark hair and beard, Nightfall, we stand on the balcony holding hands under the amber moon, echo of dogs faint in the distance. Before dawn, we are awakened by roosters crowing. We drive through the Alps, high above the earth, surrounded by clouds. At the Jungfrau, the timelessness of glaciers, frozen snow, brilliant sun, our fates a silvery white light. And this is the last one, East River Stroll. Touch of pink clouds in pale blue skies above silver skyline, Indian summer afternoon. Sound of bagpipes playing, buff joggers with t-shirts of chartreuse and salmon and neon colored shoelaces running by. Latino men, fishing rods suspended, Portable radios serenading with music from home. Punk blonde, tattooed men eating at a picnic table. Hasidic boys riding bikes, long curls waving in the wind. Asian grandparents doting on a baby in a stroller. African American man whistling by the water. Muslim girl in cream colored headscarf. <coughs> sitting by the soccer field, Indian couple chatting on a bench, gray-haired skater playing the harmonica, <laughs> gliding by. This is our New York, our river, the river I have told my secrets, the river that has offered me solace when I have mourned. Song of my childhood, Gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside. Wow.